Yo, what is up everybody, and welcome back to another Madden 21 online CFM game. We are now in week 14 of the 2022 season here in the Premier Madden League, and I gotta say our Detroit Lions are pretty close to rock bottom right now. Even in our best defensive outings the past couple of weeks, they have simply resulted in two losses, two blown fourth quarter leads, including last week's 17 point lead that we blew against the Miami Dolphins. The Dallas Cowboys are also in a precarious position entering this game, but at least they have some hopes of making the postseason. If the Dallas Cowboys win out, they can still very much get a wild card spot in the NFC. Our Detroit Lions have no such aspirations. We are 4-8 entering this game, and the draft position is more likely what we are looking at right now as we are underway with some Thursday night football. The Dallas Cowboys needing a win badly. Our Detroit Lions, well, we're not going to play for the loss. We're not playing for our draft pick right now. We're just going to try to play the best football we can possibly play down the stretch and just try to continue to configure this team because we're doing a decent job so far and there are signs of progress the past couple of weeks but especially on the offensive end there is still a lot of improvement to be made defense has gone well for us third down and four we'll see if we can get the stop at the 38 yard line as Dak Prescott looking to pass this ball outside and he's got Blake Jar when he hangs on after the hit from Jeff Okuda next play is Ezekiel Elliott one of the leading rushers in the league gets a gain of six next play look at this clean pocket for Prescott that allows him to easily diagnose this Lions defense and find a Mari Cooper for six. Now I said defense has been our strong point by far the past couple of weeks. So the fact that the Cowboys nonchalantly went on a touchdown drive in less than four minutes, not a good look for us. Now, offense, has, that's been our weak point and we're going to try to address that this week by going full send on the passing attack with Drew Locke at the quarterback position and Hunter Henry actually getting the starting nod at the tight end spot over Taysom Hill who's been starting since the TJ Hawkinson for Bobby Wagner trade as Debo Samuel makes the catch on first down it's second down and two Drew Locke trying to step up outside finding Kenny Galladay on the corner he's got the first down next play Locke oh we try to keep that pocket clean but down he goes it's a loss of seven yards Drew Locke looking to pass one more time and he's lost the ball and and thankfully we recovered with Frank Ragno, but now we are bounced out of field goal range on third down and what is seemingly a mile as Locke rolling away from the pressure just gets it off Galladay makes the one-handed catch but not for the first down Drew Locke four for four but those back-to-back -back sacks pretty much kill that drive off and we end up settling for the field goal up and good now considering our position for this season and the carefree attitude that we're seemingly going to be playing with for the rest of the season we could have easily went for that fourth down and four but you know i figured we might as well get some points on the board try to take advantage of having a good first drive and we'll see if the defense can get a stop and we can roll the momentum from there but right now ezekiel elliott is the only one rolling he's getting the first down and the dallas cowboys are showing a clear intent to run the ball and run the ball and run the ball again. Ezekiel Elliott, now he gets, oh, that's actually Tony Pollard who gets the run. He's going to spell Ezekiel Elliott who comes back into the game on second down and three to start the second quarter. Zeke's bouncing around, gets popped by Bobby Wagner, and now all of a sudden Zeke is on fire with that freight train X Factor second down and five. Elliott breaking the tackle. Ezekiel Elliott all the way for a touchdown, and the Dallas Cowboys ground and pound down our throat until they score the touchdown. This Cowboys offensive attack is looking lethal right now. Once again, they put up a touchdown drive in under four minutes, but this time it was just simply by running the ball. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I did not really try to stop the Cowboys rushing attack there. I was like, no, bro, you want to run the ball every single damn play? Go ahead, all right? Because we're not in this game to, you know, truly win this game at this point. I just want to have some fun out here, so... I kind of want to get on the offensive end and work on our offensive scheme because as you guys can see, we're running new formations, new plays, new setups, and despite that sketchy throw, it's working pretty well right now. Drew Locke, a quick 8 for 8 for 124 yards. That, I believe, was the first rushing attempt by John Emery. Locke back in the end zone. He's got Galladay for the touchdown, and the Detroit Lions put up a quick pass first touchdown drive which is the complete opposite of what the Dallas Cowboys did and are doing right now so 
pretty much if this guy wants to run it every time, I'll try to counter that by passing every time. That's got to be our mantra right now because what I want to do in this game is work on our passing scheme because trying to be a balanced team as Ezekiel Elliott still has this freight train takeover and trying to lean on the rushing attack and play, you know, that safe uh, offense and, you know, ball control and all that, it's just not working for us. We're not getting those easy yards on first down that you would want out of a good rushing attack and anything you want out of a good rushing attack. Positive yards, whatever you want. It's not happening for us. This is how you run the ball with the Dallas Cowboys. They're getting the job done on the ground right now. Except for on that play. Tony Pollard, he's having a rough go at it, but Ezekiel Elliott back into the game. Nice cut back. Oh my goodness. Ezekiel Elliott is a man amongst boys. 31 yard touchdown and that doesn't tell the full story about what Zeke just did to this Lions defense. That's three touchdown drives on three possessions for the Dallas Cowboys and mainly on the back of their superstar freight train X-Factor Ezekiel Elliott. For our Detroit Lions, we go back onto the offensive end and we go back to our pass-heavy scheme being led by Drew Luck, who's nearly picked off by Leighton Van Der Esch. 238 left in the first half underneath. That's going to be John Emery making the catch, but it's going to bring up a third down and long. Drew Luck only one in completion so far. Third down and nine is going to be play action for Luck. He's trying to dance around in this pocket going corner for Galladay, who makes the catch off of the deflection. Awkward looking play where Kenny didn't try to initially catch the ball, but I guess he had the ultimate point at the end of the day to make the catch. Sure, why not? We come out the two minute warning, finding Hunter Bryan who goes out of bounds. Next play, Drew goes low. Too low for John Emery. Running back can't make the catch. Second down, lock outside. Amon Ross St. Brown. He makes the catch, but not two feet in bounds. So it's going to be a third down along. One more time, man in motion. That is the rookie Thornton, the seventh round draft pick. Lock, middle of the field. Absolute precision on that pass to Kenny Galladay. A little over a minute to go in the first half as we try to run a little bubble for John Emery. That goes nowhere. Second down lock. He's got to get it off. And he throws the ball away after the pass rush of the Cowboys comes home. Third down and 14. 35 seconds left. Drew Lock looking to pass outside. Galladay not going to get it. Brown's got it instead. Anthony Brown prevents these Detroit Lions from scoring any more points. But what we did in return is took Ezekiel Elliott out of the zone. That's big for us for the rest of this game because... I mean, clearly that freight train X factor has been hurting us in the second quarter. But now that we got Zeke out, hopefully we can normalize this Cowboys scheme a little bit after back-to-back -back timeouts by the Detroit Lions. Cowboys check it down on third down, but it still works out for the first down to Rambo. And now the Cowboys call a timeout. They want to see if they can get some... Maybe not. After calling the timeout, the Dallas Cowboys need a ball into halftime. Sure, why not? So without further ado, let's go to the halftime show. No game of the week this week. We're just going to go straight through the league. And oh no, Mike Kosicki trying to play tough guy right there. But uh, yeah, those hits hurt and they make you fumble the ball. And sometimes the Bears take it back for six. And the Bears looking to make this a game. But they cannot contain Brees Hall, the superstar running back that did us in last week. They take down our fellow rival, the Chicago Bears, this time around. And the Dolphins move to over 500. Meanwhile, in a big battle in the NFC East, Saquon Barkley, oh my goodness, showboating on his way for six, looking to lead the Giants to a postseason berth, and this should be the pick six that gets it done. Giants move to nine and four. Meanwhile, Washington's season is in peril as they move to seven and six. Meanwhile, the Eagles underneath on fourth down. We got the tight rope by Dallas Goddard, and then, you know, nice little tip tiptoe and bounce now we got how about the tip drill to Devin Funches and the ultimately victorious Green Bay Packers who are finally with a team that can cool off Philadelphia as we go to Justin Herbert and the still undefeated Los Angeles Chargers but will they still be undefeated after this Hassan Reddick pick six puts the Cardinals on top well um, I'm here to report that they will stay undefeated because of the stop and go show from Rico Gafford. Unbelievable footwork. Chargers get the touchdown. Chargers get the victory. Three wins away from perfection. And can the Tampa Bay Buccaneers say the same after this game? Yes, they can. They dominate the Atlanta Falcons. Bucks 
also moved to 13-0. Meanwhile, balls bouncing around. Picked off by Alexander, who gets out of the scrap. He's going for six, and the suddenly resurgent San Francisco 49ers rack off their fist. Fifth victory of the season as we have Josh Allen downfield. Stefan Diggs. He absolutely torches Denzel Ward. And the Bills absolutely torch the Cleveland Browns as we have Dalvin Cook. And these Minnesota Vikings were looking good to win the NFC North Division. They're looking great to win that game against Seattle. Meanwhile, looking good to win the AFC North. This would be the Baltimore Ravens who blow out the rival Pittsburgh Steelers who dropped a forward nine. Here comes Jonathan Taylor and the Indianapolis Colts looking to make the playoffs for the first time in the league this cycle. And finally, Brandon Cooks. He's got the touchdown and the Texans have the victory as they look to win out to make the postseason. Meanwhile, the Raiders, every loss they get helps out our draft pick because we do own the Raiders first round draft pick this season. So we're keeping one eye on that. And of course, you know, we have to think about our own draft pick at this point. But, you know, we are still trying to play this game to win this game, right? That's the ultimate goal. But at the same time, if we lose this game, it's not too big of a deal. Second down. Wide open. Kenny Galladay's got the catch. Debo running in stride. And ultimately helps Kenny Galladay score the touchdown. It's the Galladay season here in Detroit. The two-point conversion to make it a field goal game at the start of the third quarter. John Emery never stood a chance. It's going to be a five-point game. But what a burst out of halftime for the Detroit Lions who are not looking to fold in this one and the passing attack can I say night and day difference from what we've seen in the past how many weeks when is the last time this Detroit Lions passing attack looks so good probably you know some season two Matt Stafford stuff I would say as the ball is on the ground and picked up by the Detroit Lions Dak Prescott gives it up and Trey Flowers on the recovery that was Aiden Hutchinson who forced the fumble Hutchinson coming in that DeAndre Swift trade with the Oakland Raiders makes an impact play. Impact play by the Dallas front four. They get the pressure on Drew Locke, forcing the incompletion third down. Locke handles the snap outside. Thornton's got the catch and gets us a fourth down and manageable here where now we can go for it here and feel good about it. Fourth down and two from the 17-yard line. Five wide. Drew Locke, four-man pass rush. Not getting home. Locke has space. Has to throw it. Finds Emery. Let's see what the four brought. Is, it is a first down for the Detroit Lions who run the ball, but they don't run the ball well. Only the second rush for John Emery in this game. Notable point there. Drew Locke is going to run the ball on second down. He's going to take a monster hit right there, but actually gets six yards in the play. Third down, five wide. Drew Locke with the ball. He's going to hold it. He's going to hold it. He's going to try to hold it as long as he can. Van Der Esch trying to close the gap. Misses. Locke lost the ball, and it's picked up by Dallas. And once again, a turnover by the Lions in scoring range. A big mistake by Drew Locke, whose job is truly on the hot seat right now. Drew Locke, there, there's no pulling punches right now as Ezekiel Elliott is definitely delivering punches to this Detroit Lions defense. Drew Locke is on the hot seat right now. If Drew Locke does not play well in this game, he will lose his starting job to Matt Stafford for the rest of the season. And in fact, Drew Locke is lucky he is still the starter of our Detroit Lions in this game because I was going to bench Drew Locke for this game, but... I decided that since this is our first game with this new pass-heavy scheme, let's let Drew Locke engineer the offense, and if he falters, then we'll bring in Stafford. But Drew Locke is doing okay right now, so, you know, Drew Locke can stay in the game. Meanwhile, the Dallas Cowboys are looking to pull away in this game, trying to get a two-possession lead. Prescott! He gets picked off instead! It's Tracy Walker, who leads the Detroit Lions in interceptions and extends that lead now as that is a Monra St. Brown in the corner. He's got the catch, and Drew Locke is over 300 yards with still over a quarter to play. Now here's Locke, quick fire, finding Debo, bit of a wobbler. Debo handles it and Debo gets us a nice gain of eight yards now here's Emery running the ball Emery not running too well right now but he's not getting too many touches this is actually Christian Beal Smith in the game who's gonna power through Van Der Esch and get that first down now here is Drew Locke one more time five wide he's going for Galladay he was open and makes the catch Kenny G 
Brady takes the offense to the 12-yard line, but the Dallas Cowboys challenge the play, and the ruling is overturned. Galladay did not get both feet in bounds, so it's going to be a second down and 10. That's pivotal, because now instead of a red zone opportunity after the Lee Smith catch, it's third down three. Late third quarter, John Emery gets the carry, gets the first down before being brought down by Woods. Now we start the fourth quarter with the Lions. Oh, looking to take the lead, but they're picked off again. Grant with the interception. That was Drew Locke targeting Debo in the middle of the field. That pass never stood a chance, and now we'll see if we can stop Ezekiel Elliott from going over 200 yards rushing because he's pretty close right now. Prescott on the play action. Got the time. Got Zeke. Middle of the field. Makes the catch. Close to a first down, but third down and one. It's powered in the backfield. He gets the carry. He meets Wagner, but not before getting the first down. Down. Dallas once again going in a run heavy fit here. They're chewing clock too much going on at the line of scrimmage. Delay of actually it's a false start on the Dallas Cowboys. So it's first down and 15 for Prescott who's looking to pass this ball. He's going deep. That's Tracy Walker on fire with universal coverage. Gets his second pick of the half and Drew Lock on the offense on the field and they start this drive off with a bang finding a Monra St. Brown next play that's gonna be Hunter Bryant making the catch Hunter Bryant having a solid game second down and one that's a wide open Debo easy first down and Law continues to put up the passing yards but can we complete the drives not on this play. That's going to be a second and loss of eight. Next play, Drew Lock one more time. We'll get the pass. Downfield, Galladay. He's gone, and the Lions have the lead. It's the Galladay season. Kenny is on fire, and now another two-point conversion by the Detroit Lions to try to make it a three-point game. Drew Lock looking to pass, and he goes low. That's Debo. He's got the catch, and it's a three-point Point lead for the Detroit Lions who are showing a clutch gene in this fourth quarter rather than blowing games in the fourth quarter so a sign of life but we need to ultimately play some good run defense if we want to win this game if we want to contain Ezekiel Elliott who gets the first down and the Cowboys are really not trying to disguise it at all they want to run this ball Pollard comes in the game they still want to run the ball first down for Tony next play is Ezekiel Elliott battles around but nice containment by the cornerback Jeff Okuda but nonetheless Zeke is over 200 yards he's gonna get the screen pass here on second down but good containment Zeke falls forward for the extra yard or two but it's still third down and five 250 left in regulation play action for Prescott gets it off tight coverage but it's a catch for CD Lamb with Okuda there Okuda misses. Zeke gets the juke. Oh, one too many jukes for Zeke. Nonetheless, a goal to go at the seven-yard line with 2:12 remaining and a timeout call by the Detroit Lions. Will Harris lays out Zeke and the second timeout by the Detroit Lions, who cling to a three-point lead. Second down run for Ezekiel Elliott. Trying to bounce it outside. Well, once again, Jeff Okuda is getting his nose dirty in this running attack. He's making pivotal tackles right now and we now go to the two minute warning lines did not call a timeout third down and goal we'll see what the cowboys do here they try to go aggressive they're gonna run the ball with zeke and they're not gonna get anywhere they run it with zeke and run it with zeke but this time we're able to get the stop that's jeremiah moon with the tackle the field goal is good that ties the game with a minute 53 remaining our detroit lions do not have any timeouts after calling that final timeout on that third down play so we got to Get downfield quickly, try to get, you know, probably a field goal here and win this game in regulation is Drew Locke. He's going to look to pass some first down, tight coverage, gets it all to a Monterey St. Brown who smartly spins out of bounds. Next play, the rookie Christian Beal Smith runs it up the middle, gets a gain of five and more importantly a first down. We're actually going to run the ball again with Christian Beal Smith, but not too productive that time around. That's going to keep the clock moving which is so important with us still about 20 yards away from field goal range clock is chewing on us right now 40 seconds left drew lock looking to pass good pocket forces it to tie johnson underneath Ty makes the catch but at what cost the clock is tick 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 we have no timeout so we're suddenly under 15 seconds left in regulation now 13 seconds left as the snap finally goes to drew lock who is gonna roll the pocket he has space to take off he's gonna throw flag on the play flag on the play and his defensive pass interference and that puts the Lions at the 38 yard line field goal range for Tucker McCann clock stops after the penalty Cowboys call a 
timeout, and they're going to try to ice Tucker McCann. This is 55 yards with high pressure for the lead. Tucker McCann, who missed the PAT last week. It's straight down the middle. He's got the leg, and the Lions have the lead with two Seconds remaining as McCann squibs it middle of the field. Cowboys field it. They lateral the ball. This is going to be the final play. Tony Pollard spinning nowhere. Down he goes. And the Detroit Lions snag their fifth victory of an otherwise miserable 2022 campaign with a sterling performance against the Dallas Cowboys who are pretty much knocked out of postseason contention with a gut-wrenching loss. A pass interference penalty takes their chance away of most likely playing in overtime. Meanwhile for the Detroit Lions, a good victory but more importantly a good performance and I think that's what's more important for us because to be completely honest with you guys, I was not really pushing that game to try to win it, right? Like, I was I was okay with, you know, losing that game if it came down to it. I just wanted to, you know, pass the ball more than anything else. And, I mean, we passed it pretty well, especially to Kenny Galladay. 270 yards. It was definitely the Galladay season. Three touchdowns as well. A monster outing. And, you know, what Amon St. Brown brought for us and Hunter Bryan and Debo Samuel... I would say the weapons really aligned in the passing game for us. Now, defensively, like I mentioned, I really didn't even come out and, like, run defenses or anything like that to, you know, truly try to stop the Cowboys. I was just like, you know what, bro? If you, I, I'm, I'm sure you're trying to play, you know, try-hard offense, and he's really sweating his balls off to try to win the game because he wants to make the postseason, which makes it even more funny that, you know, he still lost the game playing like that, but hey, it'd be what it be, GG's to the Dallas Cowboys, and I mean, hey, that's a good sign for our Detroit Lions in a game that we really didn't press to win, that we still won the game and we played well in it for the most part. Now, there were some ugly turnovers in that game, but I feel like ultimately that can be cleaned up because most of what we were doing was like trying stuff out the fumble was just stupid with drew lock but i mean otherwise the interception was you know just experimentation which you kind of live with in these kind of situations and you know i would say that the way we played that game we could play like that every game offensively and put together the defense that we played lately then you know we we might be on to something with these detroit lines we might, we might have you know found back our groove whatever you want to call it but you know basically switching to this you know pass heavy scheme putting four wide receivers on the field at all, at, at all times by the way you guys are about to see our week 15 matchup i believe it is against the chicago bears the bears user never showed up so we ended up playing the chicago bears cpu so i'm gonna show you guys some highlights from that um this game's not too important at all since uh, it has literally no implications for playoffs or anything like that so yeah i figured i'll just show you guys you know some of the plays and that's about it so you know next video you guys will be seeing it'll be week 16 against the uh carolina Panthers. There's some really fluky stuff going on in this game, by the way. I'm not going to really talk too much about it because, like, it's just me pointing the CPU. But, um, yeah, uh, I just want to talk about our team right now, right? Because, like, what we did in that game was we really just took the tight end off the field a lot of the time, right? Even though I mentioned that Hunter Bryan was our starting tight end, we ran a lot of four wide receiver sets, and we put the rookie seventh-round pick Tyquan Thornton on the field. And he was playing really well for us in preseason, and, you know, he's not he's not bad. He's, like, a, what, like 6'3", 91 speed, 75 overall, solid catching stats. So, you know, in essence, pretty much, I feel like, you know, that – we can run four wide receiver sets and be more effective than, you know, having a tight end on the field that's not even good right now. Trying to run the ball when we're not good at running the ball. Like, I'm not good at running the ball. It's not even really the team. It's just me that's, that's not good at running the ball. So, um, <laughs> well, what are you going to do, right? Like, if I'm not going to run the ball. Why, why are we going to run the ball that much? So, John Emery's a solid back. He's still our future at the running back position. But, you know, maybe we just don't run the ball 20 times unless the defense absolutely dictates that for us by coming out of, like, quarters or something like that. But otherwise, you know, I feel like, speaking of dictating, that we can really dictate the flow of, you know, our offensive end by being aggressive like that and really, like, forcing the defense to adjust to us rather than us adjusting to the defense. Stuff like that, right? Little stuff, and it's, it's probably something that was overdue, right? But, you know, as I mentioned before, like, I really didn't put any time into Madden for a while, from like the back end of season two to like a lot of season three, I, I just literally didn't play this game at all. So, 
I mean, I, I just, I guess I got tired of losing some of these games and losing them because of my own doing on, on the offensive end. So I was like, you know what, let's just, let's just try something out, right? And I, I don't know if this is the answer, but it's just, it's a lot more fun for me. And I, I think it's a lot more successful for us, right? Like we played a lot better against the Cowboys, which is why I was okay with losing that game against the Dolphins last week. Because if we won that game against Miami, we would have we played against Dallas with the same, like, trash uh, you know, balanced offense scheme, whatever you want to call it, right? And we would have lost against the Cowboys, probably. So, you know, we we just needed that. We needed that. We needed that kick in the butt to be like that. You know, open your eyes moment to be like, all right, this this is not working, right? Like we've kept the past couple of games close against all these AFC East teams. What does that really mean? So, um, as you guys can see, the All Madden CPU is kind of doing their thing right now, and we're about to lose to the CPU, which. Once again, it's not a big deal because, like, you know, what what does it really mean if we lose another game? Don't care. Truly don't care. It's going to be our ninth loss of the season if we lose this one. But that's if we lose this game because a Munro St. Brown just caught a touchdown and we're a PAT away from tying the game. If we make this with Tucker McCann, not the best accuracy, but we still nail it. Up and good. So it's 49-49. Like I mean, CPU, they were really on their stuff, right? They were really pulling every single bag out of the trick as... Check out this. Check out this play. Like, bro. <laughs> okay. Like, do you guys want me to lose? Cool. I'm not trying to lose this game, but if, if the CPU really wants to win this game that badly and make my draft pick worse, who am I to be upset about it? All right. So be it. <laughs> so we actually let the CPU score right there so we can have a chance to score at the end of regulation because I'm still trying to win this game, right? Not trying too hard, but we're trying to win this game, but... Unfortunately, that's not going to be a catch. That would have been a big catch out of bounds for Kenny Galladay. Instead, it's Drew Locke. Not really anything open downfield, so we take off and lock, get out of bounds since we have no timeouts. So four seconds left, one play from the 34-yard line, and the Chicago Bears are bringing the blitz, and it's going to force Drew Locke to throw the incompletion. Galladay had the ISO, and I like that matchup, but... Uh, Drew Locke didn't like that. He didn't make a great throw. So, um, ultimately, you know, Drew Locke played well enough to keep his starting job. There's still, you know, the window's still open for Matt Stafford to take that QB job for the last, like, game or two of the season down the stretch. We have two more games after this, but, uh, I mean, if Drew Locke plays like this, he can keep his job for the rest of the season, and, you know, we'll see how the offseason shakes out for us, because um, it's a lot more complicated, that quarterback position, once we get into the offseason, as far as, you know, free agency, and draft, and all that stuff, and, you know, we'll see what Drew Locke does, as far as development, and we'll see how that all shakes out, but, um, you know, Detroit Lions, now we're just trying to have fun with this thing right now, and I think we're, we're having more fun with this than we had at the start of the season, because, like, you know, at the start of the season, I, I wasn't playing this game for fun at all, just clocking in these games to clock them in. Now we're now we're kind of just you know building our own scheme on both sides of the ball, and I think it's working out okay for us. So uh, yeah, leave a like in the video if you guys enjoyed. You guys saw today. Subscribe for more Madden 21 gameplays, and I will catch you guys next time for some Week 16 action against the Carolina Panthers.